Siamese Cats by Tracy Harvey. Hello and welcome to my presentation about Siamese Cats. My name is Tracy Harvey and I am a current senior at Purdue University. I'm studying pre-veterinary medicine, animal sciences, and minoring in biological sciences. In addition, I will be furthering my education by pursuing my doctorate degree at Purdue University College of Veterinary Medicine. Before I begin this journey, I wanted to take the opportunity to explore feline medicine. Due to having a Siamese cat of my own, the presentation will be in relation to their characteristics. This presentation will include background information on the breed, such as origination and history, breed characteristics like phenotypic traits, and common diseases such as periodontal disease, bronchial asthma, heart disease, liver disease, amyloidosis, and kidney disease. The origination of the breed has been up for a debate for many years now. According to an article published by North Carolina Veterinary Medicine in 2017, Siamese cats came from Thailand, which was then known as Siam. There's still a debate about how old they exactly are, but the Thai manuscript Tamar Mayu, the cat book poems, seems to depict them. The work was created between the 14th and 18th century. They were also described as being held in high esteem by royal families. It was believed that after death, the soul of a family member enters the body of a Siamese. And on the screen, we'll see a picture of the manuscript. Moreover, the Siamese breed was not present in America until the late 19th century. According to an article by ASPCA Pet Health Insurance in 2016, one of the first known owners of a Siamese cat was First Lady Lucy Hayes, wife of President Luther Ford B. Hayes, who was in office from 1877 to 1881. She received the cat as a gift from a U.S. diplomat working in Thailand. Interesting enough, National Siamese Cat Day has been celebrated since 2014 on April 6th. Due to the breed believing to be originated from Thailand, the word Siam, the former name of Thailand, until 1939 and 1946 to 1948 is reflected in the breed name, Siamese. The Siamese breed is actually known as a natural breed as the breed's coat color is due to a genetic mutation. Furthermore, there are different variations among the breed which include the seal point, the chocolate point, the blue point, and the lilac point. According to the article published by SPCA Pet Health Insurance in 2016, the seal point Siamese are noted to have pale fawn to cream colored body with dark brown points. The chocolate point is characterized by an ivory body with milk chocolate points. The blue point has bluish white body with deep blue points and the lilac point is characterized by a white body with pinkish gray points. When mentioning the Siamese cat points, this is the coloration of the breed's extremities, such as their nose, ears, paws, and tail. These areas are actually controlled by a temperature-sensitive enzyme, which will be covered in an upcoming topic. In addition to having many variations, the Siamese have also contributed to the development of other breeds that include the Oriental, the Balinese, the Tonkinese, and the Havana Brown. The next topic that will be discussed will be about the temperature sensitive enzyme that was alluded to in an earlier focus. Before covering the specific enzyme, let's review some cell biology. The skin of mammals has an outer layer, the epidermis, which is made up of keratinocytes that produces keratin. These cells help with the healing of smaller wounds. Underneath the keratinocytes, there are melanocytes, which are responsible for the production of melanin. Melanin is a natural pigment which is responsible for the coloration of hair, the color of skin, and the protection against intensive light like UV. However, mutations can occur within the double helix and can cause the protein structures to not form correctly. Due to these changes, minor and severe issues can occur. A similar situation has occurred to the protein tyranase. This is the enzyme in Siamese that produces melanin. The mutation within the double helix has resulted in a phenotypic change. 
According to an article by Edwinus Stonknos in 2014, such mutant enzyme as previous research papers have shown is temperature sensitive. This means that increasing the temperature will decrease the activity of the enzyme tyranase. This is why Siamese warmer parts of the body are coated with white coloration, which is melanin lacking fur due to a tyranase being inactive in these portions of the body. Due to the warm temperature in the womb, this helps explain why Siamese are typically born with almost all white coat. Furthermore, the enzyme is active in the extremities of Siamese, such as their points, which results in a darker coloration due to melanin containing fur. The enzyme tyronase catalyzes the reaction of tyrosine to dopaquinone. This ending product is what is then made into melanin. The chemical reaction of this is illustrated on the slide. According to an article published by North Carolina Veterinary Medicine in 2017, Siamese have rated in or near the top 10 cat breeds in America based on Cat Fanciers Association restriction statistics. Siamese tend to be very intelligent and love to explore. In addition, they are very affectionate and social, which in return makes them wonderful furry companions. This breed also tends to be very vocal at times. Three other interesting attributes in this breed include being able to be leash trained, play fetch, and play ping pong. Other characteristics about Siamese is that their lifespan is around 15 to 20 years. The males typically weigh 9 to 15 pounds, while females weigh 6 to 12 pounds. In addition, Siamese average 20 to 25 centimeters in height and 29 to 36 centimeters in length. One of the outstanding characteristics of Siamese are their bright blue eyes. In the past, the majority of Siamese used to be cross-eyed, which was due to a genetic flaw within the eye structure called retina. The retina is a thin layer of tissue that lines the back of the eye on the interior near the optic nerve. The function of this structure is to convert the light signal received by the lens into neural signals. These signals are then sent to the brain where an image is formed. However, instead of the retinas being lined up in the back of the eye, the structural issue leads to the center of the left retina to be shifted to the right, and the center of the right retina to be shifted to the left. Therefore, if the Siamese cat's eyes were positioned straight forward, the retinas would be looking in different directions. The brain would then interpret this information as a duplicated image than what is actually present. The situation could be explained through an example. If a mouse was in front of a Siamese with this structural flaw, their eyes were straightforward, the Siamese would perceive two mice instead of one. However, when the Siamese are cross-eyed, they will be able to see one mouse, the actual image. The structural issue has been minimized with Siamese through the process of selective breeding. In the past, Siamese used to be commonly seen with kink tails. Even though many myths have been created to explain this phenotypic characteristic, the variation in tails are also due to genetics. Furthermore, this trait, just like the crossed eyes, were seen as undesirable to breeders and selective breeding was employed in order to remove this characteristic for a more normal appearance, like a long, sleek, straight tail. The majority of Siamese have signs of periodontal disease by the age of three, which is due to the lack of dental hygiene incorporated into their care. In order to prevent this disease, it is recommended that Siamese have their teeth brushed at home regularly with the addition of professional cleanings annually. Periodontal disease has different stages. Therefore, it is important to recognize the signs at each stage. According to an article published by Merck Manual Veterinary Manual in 2013, periodontal disease is an infection and inflammation of the periodontium due to plaque bacteria in the host response to the bacterial insult. For reference, the periodontium consists of the tissues that surround and support the teeth.
The oral cavity has rich bacterial microflora which thrives in plaque on the surface of teeth, and this microflora continuously presents antigen to the marginal gingiva. This leads to an inflammatory response which results in gingivitis. Once this plaque thickens and the oxygen is depleted, more pathogenic bacteria are able to flourish in this environment. This then leads to the development of subgingival plaque, which is located on the surface of teeth and below the gingival margin. Similar to the development of gingivitis, the subgingival plaque will lead to the stimulation of an inflammatory response, which is known as periodontitis. In addition, the bacteria and the inflammatory mediators that are involved lead to bone and tissue damage around the root of the infected tooth. However, Periodontitis can also be impacted by intrinsic factors and extrinsic factors. Some intrinsic factors include genetics, tooth crowding, thin alveolar bone, and age. Some examples of extrinsic factors include diet, stress, and oral hygiene. There are four stages of periodontal disease. Stage 1 includes the presence of only gingivitis. Stage 2 includes early signs of periodontitis with less than 25% of attachment loss. Stage 3 includes moderate periodontitis, which is characterized by 25% to 50% of attachment loss. Stage 4 includes advanced periodontitis and is characterized by greater than 50% of attachment loss. Signs of gingivitis are able to be reversed by professional cleanings due to the bacteria is removed, which leads to the mouth to return to its uninflamed state. Since periodontitis is not as reversible as gingivitis, other more aggressive types of treatment are implemented. These treatments include root scaling, which is removing plaque and calculus on exposed root surfaces, planning, which is smoothing the root surfaces by removing textual irregularities and diseased cementum, and gingival curettage that removes the infected and inflamed inside layer of a periodontal pocket. If the periodontal pocket is greater than 6 mm, open surgery is typically employed in order to properly carry out root scaling, planning, and alveoloplasty. Later signs of periodontitis are usually treated by removing the infected teeth that have high mobility and poor prognosis. When there is major bone loss, bone grafts can be implemented which will help guide the regeneration of new tissue. Another health issue that Siamese are particularly susceptible to is bronchial asthma, which is also known as allergic bronchitis. This syndrome is similar to asthma in humans. In addition, this syndrome is typically develops in early years and does not suddenly appear in older age. Some of the common signs of bronchial asthma include coughing, wheezing, and shortness of breath. One sign of shortness of breath includes the presence of bluish mucous membranes, which signifies a lack of oxygen in the blood. According to an article published by Merck Manual Veterinary Manual in 2018, the veterinarian's diagnosis is made from the history, physical examination, and clinical signs, and by ruling out other causes of coughing. Diagnostic tools include chest x-rays, use of an endoscope to view the bronchial tubes, and collection of biopsy and swab samples for laboratory analysis. In order to help loosen the secretions, supportive therapy can be implemented, such as rest, warmth, proper hygiene, and mist or steam from a hot shower. Also, those that have bronchial asthma should minimize their contact with allergens such as cigarette smoke, perfumes, pollen, molds, and dust. Furthermore, the underlying disease should also be treated with the use of oral or inhaled corticosteroids, which will decrease the presence of inflammation. Another health issue that Siamese are seen to have is heart disease, which can be divided into those that are congenital, meaning that they are born with it, and those that are acquired, meaning developing throughout a cat's life. Acquired disorders can result from felines that have high blood pressure, feline myocarditis, which is inflammation of the heart muscle, and feline aortic thromboembolism, which occurs due to blood clots. The acquired disorder that is most commonly seen in cats is called cardiomyopathy. 
By dividing up the word cardiomyopathy, we can determine its meaning as cardio, meaning heart, myo, meaning muscle, and pathy, meaning disease. Therefore, cardiomyopathy refers to the disease of the heart of which the muscle is negatively impacted and damaged. There are three main types of cardiomyopathy, dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and restrictive cardiomyopathy. And to the right, you can see a diagram of all three types and what it looks like compared to the normal heart. Dilated cardiomyopathy leads to the progression of loss of a heart muscle's ability to contract. Cats with this type will have a very difficult time breathing due to pulmonary edema and pleural effusion. Pulmonary edema refers to the accumulation of fluids in the lungs and pleural effusion refers to the accumulation of fluid in the chest cavity. According to an article published by Merck Manual Veterinary Manual in 2018, the outlook is great for cats with dilated cardiomyopathy that is not terrene responsive. Half of infected cats will die within two weeks of diagnosis. Cats that have terrene responsive cardiomyopathy also have a high risk of death. However, cats that can be kept alive long enough for terrain supplementation to become effective, which is around two to three weeks, have an excellent outlook. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is characterized by the thickening of the left ventricle. This disease is due to a genetic defect and is the most common type of cardiomyopathy seen in Siamese. This disease can be seen throughout a cat's life from three months to 17 years, but most cats with this disease are middle-aged. Those that show signs could include difficulty breathing, weakness or paralysis of the hind limbs, and sudden death. Upon examination, a veterinarian may hear murmurs and gallop sounds in the heart. Those that have mild cases of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy have a good long-term outlook while those with more severe cases do not. According to an article about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, treatment is directed at controlling signs of heart failure, improving cardiac function, and reducing the incidence of blood clots. Diuretics to reduce fluid buildup, oxygen, calcium channel blockers, beta blocker, or ACE inhibitor may all be considered within the treatment. The third type of cardiomyopathy is restrictive cardiomyopathy, which is characterized by the stiffening of the left ventricle without the addition of thickening of the muscle fibers. Due to this condition, the, this leads to the left ventricle not refilling with blood between heartbeats. This then leads to the enlargement of the left atrial and in some cases heart failure. The animal will usually show signs that are similar to those that were discussed in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which include difficulty breathing, weakness or paralysis of the hind limbs, and sudden death. Upon examination by a veterinarian, an echocardiogram is typically analyzed for diagnosis. The treatment for this disease is also similar to those that are implemented for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Sadly, those that are diagnosed with restrictive cardiomyopathy do not have as well of an outlook than those with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. The next health issue that will be discussed is amyloidosis. Amyloidosis is a disease that is characterized by the deposition of amyloid, which is composed of non-functioning, abnormally folded proteins which are typically deposited in organs that can range throughout the body. In Siamese, this condition is especially prevalent in the deposition within the liver and the kidney, which can lead to disorders of these organs, which will be covered in an upcoming topic. Amyloidosis causes damage due to the amyloid leading to the displacement of normal cells in the infected organs. Different classifications of amyloidosis exist which the variations are distinguished between the amyloid that is abnormally folded. For example, the deposition of AA amyloid develops from the chronic inflammatory diseases, chronic bacterial infections, and cancers. Another type of amyloidosis 
involves the AL amyloid protein, which usually results due to animals having cancers such as plasma cell tumor or myelomas. Due to the progression of this disease, it is often difficult to detect and difficult to diagnose. According to an article published by Merck Manual Veterinary Manual in 2018, your veterinarian might suspect amyloidosis if your cat has a chronic infection or inflammation and develops kidney or liver failure. No specific treatment can prevent the development of amyloidosis or promote the reabsorption of the protein deposits. Instead, efforts aim to control long-term inflammation in order to minimize the production of more amyloid. Another health issue that is seen among felines is liver disease. The liver is able to carry out a wide range of functions like metabolizing and detoxifying. It also has a large capacity for substances like toxic compounds, and it is able to regenerate. These functions allow the liver to be protected from permanent damage most of the time. However, the liver may become injured and fail to carry out its functions. As previously discussed, amyloidosis leads to the accumulation of amyloid and can lead to the development of liver disease. In cases where the liver is not functioning properly, the cat will typically show signs of liver disease. These symptoms can include loss of appetite, vomiting, stomach ulceration, diarrhea, fever, blood clotting problems, jaundice, abnormal swelling, excessive urination and thirst, changes in liver size, weight loss, and occasional gastrointestinal bleeding. Different diagnostic tests that may be employed by a veterinarian include x-rays and ultrasounds to examine the condition of the liver and gallbladder, and tissue biopsies. The treatment given to a cat with liver disease varies depending on the situation. In many cases, supportive care is provided, which allows more time for the liver to regenerate. This consists of administrating fluids, medications to protect the liver, and dietary support. As previously stated, amyloidosis can lead to the accumulation of amyloid in organs such as the kidneys. This in return can lead to other diseases such as chronic kidney disease, which lead to the progression of kidney failure over time. First of all, the kidney carries out some vital functions, such as participating in the renal system, filtering impurities out of the blood, and producing urine. According to an article by Cornell Feline Health Center in 2019, Clinical signs of chronic kidney disease include the loss of important proteins and vitamins in their urine may contribute to abnormal metabolism and loss of appetite. They may also experience elevated blood pressure, which is also called hypertension, which can affect the function of a number of important systems, which may include, include the eyes, brain, and heart. In order to diagnose a cat with kidney disease, blood tests and urinalysis are typically performed by a veterinarian. The blood test will allow the blood, urine, nitrogen, and creatine levels to be analyzed, which will be helpful in determining the kidney's level of functioning. Usually, higher levels of these compounds indicate the kidneys are not functioning properly, but other factors like dehydration can impact results. Due to this, at least two blood tests are usually performed two weeks apart in order to compare the values. However, a new test is available that measures symmetric dimethyl arginine, which is a waste product of protein metabolism, which allows the disease to be detected sooner. The urine will enable the veterinarian to analyze the concentration of urine, the pH, the presence of protein, blood cells, bacteria, and other cells. The urinalysis will also allow the elimination of bacterial urinary tract infections. Other diagnostic tests may include radiographs and ultrasounds. Even though there is no cure to chronic kidney disease, therapy is employed in order to decrease the progression of this disease. 
In addition, therapy will be used to minimize the buildup of toxic waste products in the bloodstream, adequate hydration, and appropriate nutrition. According to an article by Cornell Feline Health Center published in 2019, some cats respond very well to treatment for chronic kidney disease, while others do not. So the prognosis for chronic kidney disease is affected cats in quite a variable way. Some studies suggest that cats that lose more protein in their urine have less favorable prognoses. There is evidence suggesting that the earlier chronic kidney disease is diagnosed and treated initially, the better the outcome with respect to quality of life and survival. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation about Siamese cats. All the next few slides are my references for the presentation.